vehicle we've been in for the past four weeks, the Hippie Drift. Um, we rented it from Hippie Campers out of Cairns and we've been driving on the east coast of it and it's worked out pretty well for us. If you're a couple looking to travel economically for a good budget, this is definitely a vehicle for you. It's a Mitsubishi Express, so it's a smaller van. Not very large inside, but as you can see it has a lot of good features and it will definitely get you where you need to go. We have one of the newer models. There are a lot of older models and some of them may not have all the features this one has or be quite as nice, but they should be roughly the same. One feature that I believe all of them has is the awning. It works well, it's a good awning, it provides nice shade and a good little area. The van comes fully equipped with everything you're going to need, including everything you'll need to cook with. It comes with plates, glasses, cooking ware, kettles, basically you won't need anything to cook with this van and it does also include a stove, which we'll get to. The front seat has seating for two and two seat belts. It's a manual transmission, so you'll have to be able to drive manual. It's easy to drive with power steering and as a smaller van it fits into any kind of parking stall you could imagine and it also does fit into most underground parking areas. It's a radio, which has CD and room for an auxiliary cord to be plugged in so that you can plug in your phone. It also has a single cigarette lighter, which you can use to charge appliances. When you receive it, it'll be set up like this, with a bench here. Our van included a TV with a DVD player and satellite. When you rent the van, you'll receive a bedding kit option for $20, and that bedding kit will include a duvet here, sheets, towels, and pillows. The windows all have curtains, including on the front, to block out light, and the two windows in ours both open and are fixed with bug screens. On top, you'll see that there is a fire alarm, LED lighting, with a nice blue light function if you want a party, <laughs> and a fire extinguisher in the back. This is the interior of the Hippie Drift without bedding on the bed. It's very easy to set up. That section that you saw before pulls out and then you place the cushions across it. The cushions are relatively thin. They're simply trailer mattresses and this cushion is actually a two-piece and significantly smaller than this one. During the night sometimes they would separate. Other than that, the cushions are relatively comfortable. We had pretty good sleeps on them. It's not a king-size plush bed, but it'll do. Here's the bed fully set up and takes up the entire interior of the van. If you are a tall person, being 6'2", I have to move the seats forwards a tiny bit so that I feel like I can actually stretch up. The bed is just big enough for someone who's in the taller range, but it is big enough for two people and it's been comfortable. The rear of the van is nicely set up for cooking and cleaning. It includes a little bit of storage space. There's not quite enough. These two drawers can be used for storage. The bottom drawer here houses a battery, and this is the battery monitor. The vehicle is fitted with a dual battery system, which allows the fridge to continue running. However, we've found, with our vehicle at least, that as soon as the power monitor drops below 12 volts, our fridge ceases to function. So when we park for a night and are not plugged into main power, our fridge does not function anymore. It operates while driving, and if we're plugged into main power at a caravan park. There's four plugs here which only provide power when you are plugged into an exterior power source. When you're free camping, the Hippie van will not provide you with any power through any of these outlets. The only power you'll be able to receive is from the cigarette lighter in the front when the vehicle is on accessory or turned on. When you go to a caravan park, they provide you with an extension cord. And like most campers, you can plug into main power through this and that will allow you to use these four plugs in the rear of the vehicle. During regular operation, the fridge roof continues to work, and it's a reasonable sized fridge. It can fit, it comes with a freezer, and enough room for any kind of groceries you might want. Additional cutlery is also supplied. Everything you'll need, can openers, knives, ladles, everything you'll ever need to cook. For $25, you also receive a small cooking stove, which works well and operates off of butane containers. There's also a sink here, which operates with a pump. We're currently pretty low on water, so it's not working very well. Normally, a lot of water would come out of there. It drains outside of the vehicle and is refilled from a 20 liter tank in the bottom. Down here is more storage space if you'd like to use it and also storage for your cooking stove, 
your electronic lead which will attach to the campsites, and of course your water. In the rear of the van there's also a second LED light, which we found if you turn on the light and close the rear at night, a lot of light is let out through the back window, letting you sit outside without needing to use a flashlight. The van also comes with two roof racks on top. They're small roof racks and mainly just to hold the awning on, but if you wanted to put a surfboard or something on there, you would be able to. We've been living in the hippie van for about four weeks now, and in general, we found it pretty good. It's gotten us everywhere we needed to go. It was great for us to camp in. We managed to do all of our own cooking, and we could sleep in it wherever we want. It was nice and cozy, and it was nice to have something that you didn't have to stay in a hotel or a hostel all the time with. The downsides that we did find to it were the fact that we didn't have any power available in the van most times. We did purchase an inverter, which we would use through the cigarette lighter when we were driving, and that allowed us to charge some objects. The other downside that we did find was because we freedom camped most of the time, in four weeks we stayed in only three caravan parks. And so other than the lack of having something to charge our electronics in the vehicle, we also found that having the fridge not work during the nights was sometimes a downside. The fridge would work when we were plugged into power or when we were driving, but on days when we were only doing about an hour of driving per day, it just it wasn't cold enough to keep things good, and so we had to really change the way we bought stuff. We couldn't buy any kind of perishables and keep them for very long. So we'd have to buy any meat that day, and we started using powdered milk instead of milk because we couldn't keep it in the fridge for very long. Those were really the big downsides of it. Other than that, the bed wasn't as comfy as we really expected it to be. It was slightly uncomfortable, and the fact that the two mattresses are strange shapes was a little irritating sometimes with a hole being made in the bed. We compensated for that though by just making the sheets up very tight on the sides so that the hole didn't come up and redoing the bed every day. And for the price, the hippie van is a great commodity to use. It's a good van, the least expensive rental we could find in Australia, and we had no mechanical problems. It's gotten us everywhere we wanted to go. The awning's been great. The kitchen's been really good. The sink is perfect. The 20 liter water supply was very good. We refilled that at various taps along the way. And just in general, we've had a lot of fun in it so far. I mean, there's not a lot of storage space inside of the van. That's one negative. But if you are careful with your storage, you can stuff most of your clothes into the side storage areas that you saw there. And you can fit your backpacks and all that kind of stuff underneath the bed, where there is a reasonable amount of storage. The van also comes with a safe, which is underneath the bed, which is secured to the vehicle, and is locked with a passcode or a key. We found that almost everything on the hippie van was in fairly good order. We received a new hippie van, so it didn't have any of the problems of the older ones. We have seen older ones that didn't have awnings or didn't have TVs and satellite and such, so you might want to call and check what type of van you're going to be getting, if it's an older model or a newer one. But other than that, I think it's a great van for the price and we've been really happy with it.